Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Trump is sick of LeBron and just humiliated him overnight with nasty revenge. It's on. Racism strictly defined as prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. Put another way it is the belief that all members of each race possess certain characteristics or abilities specific to that race, as a means to distinguish it as inferior or superior to another. It is also a favorite insult or epithet to label someone with in an effort to shut them up or diminish the veracity of what they are saying. For those that ascribe to identity politics, there is no acceptable defense for the crime of being born of European ancestry or white. Instead, that lack of melanin is used as a weapon to marginalize, to silence, to ouster and attack. People seem to forget that one cannot get to genocide without first visiting identity politics. Take the recent words of Julius Malama for instance. Malama is a prominent politician in South Africa and a leader at the forefront of the country's current movement to confiscate land from white property owners and then redistribute it to the country's black population, told white people in his country that he is not going wage genocide against them. Yet. In an interview with TRT World News published this week, Malama said, we have not called for the killing of white people. At least for now. I can't guarantee the future. Zimbabwe lives as a prime example of the economic consequences of identity politics, genocide, and land expropriation, as it plunged the country in economic devastation spanning nearly two decades. Formerly considered the breadbasket of Southern Africa, now more than a quarter of the population is in danger of starving today. H. So even by the most basic of measurements, Zimbabwe's policies have been a complete and utter failure, copying them is tantamount to suicide. Yet these all seem to be irrelevant details for those like Malama. America seems no less eager to enter into the same racially tinged morass, yet people seem to forget that one cannot get to genocide without first visiting identity politics. Those that choose to cross some fictional boundary into the twilight zone of independent thought and stand up to the victim cartel threaten the solidarity of the narrative that America and perhaps even all of Western civilization is comprised of identity victims and identity oppressors, and must, therefore, be silenced by any means possible. Those such as YouTube blogger Candace Owen, among others are ostracized and publicly shamed and ridiculed for daring to contradict the peddling of victimhood. Owen consistently makes the point over and over again in her writing that all the help and solicitude black Americans have gotten from their overseers on the Democratic Party plantation have merely made life worse for the black community as a whole, especially with regard to policies based on the idea that black people need lots of assistance to overcome systemic structural racism and the legacies of slavery. Any success enjoyed by a white person is dismissed as white privilege and any means to defend oneself against such a dismissal is met with accusations of racism. Attacks that are brutal and oppressive, bullying you into attempting to appease or not speaking up at all for fear of losing your career, reputation, and respect. It can scare many into silence and self-censorship when racism is found in even the most innocuous of comments and can lead to devastating consequences. Yet people forget their history. In 1913, just a few years before the Russian Revolution, the Bolsheviks were a tiny group of radicals. Four years later they had taken over the entire country. In 1928, the Nazi party was an obscure joke, winning a mere 2.6% of the votes in the national election that year. Not even five years later, Adolf Hitler was German Chancellor and had been awarded supreme power by the Enabling Act of 1933. Again I will repeat one cannot get to genocide without first visiting identity politics. President Donald Trump was in the public eye and the media for years prior to the 2016 presidential election. Yet, he was never accused of racism until he announced his intentions to run for president against Hillary Clinton. Now it is a label that is oft repeated with little supporting evidence. CNN's Don Lemon recently interviewed LeBron James, the former Cleveland Cavaliers star who recently signed a massive contract with the Los Angeles Lakers. Both men have publicly show particular animus towards Trump with lengthy on-air diatribes, and insulting tweets aimed directly at President Trump. The interview was focused mostly on James' recent $8 million donation to build a new public school called I Promise. The school is for at-risk third and fourth graders in James' hometown of Akron, Ohio. Through the course of the interview topics naturally turned to Trump, a man both men love to hate. James complained in the interview that Trump has used athletics and athletes to divide the country. I can't sit back and say nothing, James said. Lemon also asked James what he would say to Trump if he was sitting across from him. I would never sit across from him, James said. No. I would sit across from Barack though. 
because apparently an actual conversation to understand another point of view is no longer done. In his typical style, Trump struck back, tweeting, LeBron James was just interviewed by the dumbest man on television, Don Lemon. He made LeBron look smart, which isn't easy to do. This race thing is taking over, James said, claiming that sports helped him to understand white people and be around them. James then brought up Charlottesville, claiming Trump's comments in the wake of the events there emboldened racists to speak publicly. I think the president in charge now has given people, they don't care now, they throw it in your face now, he said. Lemon then asked James if he would consider a run for president in 2020 if there was no one else nominated who could beat Donald Trump. James replied, well, in that case, I may. Let's see first. James said that the death of Trayvon Martin hit a switch in his life where he committed to using his voice for a political platform. No matter how successful you could become, no matter who you are, when you are an African-American kid, you're always going to be going against obstacles, James said. And there it is, peddling this ideology of perpetual victimhood, that no matter how successful a black man or woman is, they will always struggle and face obstacles ostensibly due to racism as a result of the color of their skin. I will say for the third and final time, one cannot get to genocide without first visiting identity politics. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.